Today, we're gonna talk about Dalvin Street Resort. Let's go. Hello, 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 hello. Hi guys, welcome back. This is Sean from Play by Paws, and today we're gonna talk about WG Resolve. There's no secret that I'm a Premiere Pro user for a long, long, long time. And recently I shot a lot of projects using a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K, and I thought it'd be a perfect time to explore or learn the WG Resolve. So I picked it up and I've been using this software for the past two to three weeks. And I must say it's pretty impressive and positive. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, honest first impressions for the DaVinci Resolve. In this video, I'm not going to go in-depth review, but I promise I'm going to do a more in-depth review in future for this software. So remember to stay tuned on our channel. Anyway, let's jump right in. First off, is Resolve that good in terms of color gradings? 100% yes. There's no secret that Resolve has been very well known for the color gradings and a lot of professional colorists has been using this software for their film or commercial projects. In the software itself, the settings allows you to do color manipulations or advanced color adjustments compared to Premiere Pro. In Premiere Pro, they have a built-in color gradings called as Lumetri Colors. It does a good job, but you must agree with me that sometimes you couldn't get the color you want from the Premiere Pro Dometric Colors. On the other hand, Resolve has a more accurate color selector, micro adjustment, and somehow it just feels faster and smoother. Next, is it hard to make the switch to DaVinci Resolve? Based on my experience, it's not too hard to make the switch. Yes, it will take some time for you to adapt the software, but I'm sure that your muscle memory will get used with it after some practice. To me, one of the key points to master the software is by understanding the shortcut key so that you can utilize or navigate the software in a more efficient way. So if you are worrying about the shortcut key, I can assure you that you can pick it up easily since you can change the shortcut key to Premiere Pro settings or even you can fully configure the shortcut key based on your personal preference. Next, how to work between Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. It's pretty simple actually. The process was known as round trip, where you can pass the editing files from Premiere Pro to DaVinci or DaVinci back to Premiere Pro with just simple process. Let me show you how. So once you finish editing in Premiere Pro, you can go to File, Export, Final Cut Pro XML, and essentially allow you to import into DaVinci Resolve for color grading or finishing. This happens to be a reverse process too. Once you finish color grading, you can simply go to delivery panel, choose XML and select file type you prefer. In my case, Apple ProRes 422. And then add to render queue. Lastly, start rendering. Once it's done, import the XML file back to Premiere Pro and you're good to go. I miss Notebase. Coming from a new compositing software background, I still like how the Notebase works because it always gives you the versatility. I understand that there's a lot of users are afraid of using Notebase because they are very used with their layer-based software such as Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, and of course Premiere Pro. I must agree that it's a bit intimidating at first when using a Notebase software, but it makes so much sense if you are doing color grading. Because in color grading, you would like to fully utilize the color space in the footage without distracting the footage itself. What I mean by distracting footage is that Notebase software able to do multiple adjustments or advanced color adjustments without affecting the original media. As for Premiere Pro, you are stacking the adjustment over adjustments to create the final results. Interface, the interface is meant for color gradings. As you can see, the main color wheel happens to be at the corner left, where you can find a very familiar settings, which is the highlight, mid-tone, and shadows. Aside from that, you also can find out something that is not too familiar, which is their Leaf, Gamma, and Gain, which is not too familiar if you're coming from a Premiere Pro experience. Next, you can easily tweak the colors or do macro color adjustment using their color wheel, which you may find very sensitive compared to Premiere Pro Lumetri colors, which is a good thing. 
Aside from that, you can find advanced settings such as curve, qualifier, key, mask, and lastly, one of my favorites, the tracking systems. The tracking system is so easy to use and so powerful. Definitely dig into this feature. Last but not least, you can save your color grids by simply do a grab steals and use their speed screen features so that you can have a more accurate side-by-side -side color matchings. It makes so much sense compared to the reference monitor from the Premiere Pro. Some things off topic, some things that I realized when I'm using DaVinci Resolve is how smooth the editing process. I'm not referring to the editing smoothness. What I'm trying to say that is there's nothing pops up when I'm using this software and I can just go on hours and hours without any disruptions. So far, I have not encountered any crash when I'm using Resolve. Compared to Premiere Pro, which crash quite often, um, yes, I do agree that there's autosave features when it crash, but it's still very, very annoying when it happens. Um, I'm pretty sure that you will know what I mean if you are from a Premiere Pro user. So stability-wise, DaVinci Resolve is definitely a clear winner. Last, am I switching? Unfortunately, I do not have a solid answer for that because I believe both software does a good job in their own way. Personally, I use Premiere Pro for a more running gun project such as Wedding or YouTube because I'm so comfortable with it and there's a lot of third-party plugs in dedicated for Premiere Pro. As for DaVinci Resolve, I will use it for a more specific projects such as commercials or more cinematic videos where I can spend more time to go into detail and manipulate the color. In conclusion, my first impression for DaVinci Resolve is wonderful. I can't wait to episode another videos about this software since there are a lot more going on in this suite. For example, the edits, which is more or less like the FCP or Premiere Pro. Next is the Fusions, which is something like Adobe After Effects. Lastly, Fairy Lights, which is something like Adobe Auditions. So I hope you guys learned one or two things from this video. If you guys like this video, remember to hit the like button, subscribe our channel, and as always, create, learn, and have fun. And I'll see you guys in the next video.